Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I think it is time to answer some questions just to check if you have got the lesson well or not. So question number one. Distinguish between cytokinesis from karyokinesis. So as I have mentioned before also cyto is cytoplasm and karyo is nucleus and kinesis means movement. So separation of cytoplasm is cytokinesis and separation of nucleus is karyokinesis. So let us quickly look at the difference. Cytokinesis is a division of cells cytoplasm. Karyokinesis is division of a cells nucleus. In cytokinesis, you do not, we do not have further stages. It is just one simple step. But karyokinesis is a complex process and that is why it is divided into so many steps like prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Cytokinesis occurs later. Karyokinesis occurs before. First karyokinesis occurs, that is first the nucleus gets divided and at last the cytoplasm divides. So karyokinesis is always followed by cytokinesis. Let us look at question number two. What is G0 of cell cycle, which is also known as quiescent phase? It is an inactive stage of cell cycle where the cell remains metabolically active but do not proliferate unless required. Now, some cells do not need to divide all the time. They need to divide only when required as per the condition. Maybe some other cells got damaged or some other cells are dead. So for replacement you need more cells and that is, only, that is the only reason when a cell needs to divide. Otherwise there is no need of division. So what will such cells do? So such cells enter into a stage where they will be inactive. They will not undergo any division until and unless required. However, they are metabolically active. That is they are capable of division but they will not divide. So such a stage is known as G0 stage of the cell cycle. Now, where will this stage come in the cell cycle? If you see the cell cycle, such cells will exit G1 phase and enter G0 phase. So from here, they will go to G0 phase. So there will be no S phase. So G1, that is the gap phase where they will be undergoing all the metabolic activities, they turn mature and after that they will enter this G0 phase which is a kind of resting phase for them. But they will be metabolically active. One such example is the heart cells. Now heart cells, they do not divide always. In fact, they do not need to divide always. They divide only occasionally as needed to replace dead or injured cells. So there are many such cells in our body which do not need to divide all the time. Question number three, name the stage of cell cycle at which one of the following events occur. So let us see at what stage following events occur. Chromosomes are moved to spindle equator. So at what stage did we see that the chromosomes were aligned at the equatorial plate forming the metaphase plate? Of course, it was during metaphase and that is why it is known as the metaphase plate. So it, if you see, this is how it was in case of mitosis as well as meiosis both. So it always happened in metaphase. Centros, mirrors, plates and chromatids separate. So whenever we talk about chromatids separate, we generally talk about mitosis because in meiosis 1, there is no separation of chromatids. However, in meiosis 2, there is. So when the chromatids separate from each other, just after the metaphase, that is during anaphase. So during anaphase of mitosis or you can say anaphase 2 of meiosis 2. So anaphase is the stage. So this is how they separate from each other. Next is pairing between homologous chromosomes take place. Now pairing doesn't happen as part of mitosis. Mitosis is all about replicate and split. So pairing and recombination happens in meiosis. So pairing will happen in which stage? It will of course happen in prophase 1. But exactly which stage of prophase 1? Right, zygotein. So in the zygotein, zygotein which meant paired threads. You remember? That is why the pairing happens there. So this is how the pairing happened. 
Crossing over between homologous chromosomes take place. Again, crossing over will also take place in prophase 1, but in which stage? So, zygotine, the homologous chromosomes will pair up. The next stage was pachytene. So, in the pachytene phase, pachytene meant thick threads. So, it became thick. Well, how? Because the crossing over happened between in the tetrads. So, that is the pachytene stage. So this is how, so after the Bakitin stage was the metaphase stage where they aligned at the equator. So you see here, you can observe the crossing over part. So this part is the result of crossing over. Again, this part is the result of crossing over. This part is result of crossing over. Let's look at the next question. Describe the following. Synapsis bivalent chiasmata. Now all of this takes place during meiosis 1. In fact, to be more specific, all of them take place during prophase 1 of meiosis 1. So what was synapsis? It is nothing but pairing of the homologous chromosomes. It occurs during prophase 1 of meiosis, of course. So next is bivalent. Bivalent is another name for tetrad. That is when the homologous chromosomes group together to form a group of four chromosomes. So a pair of synapsed homologous chromosome. So first synapsis will take place. How? Let us suppose this is from maternal chromosome and this is paternal chromosome. So in synapsis what will happen? They will pair up something like this. So that is how synapsis occurred. Fine. In the bivalent, what will happen? These two will get combined to form a group of four. So somewhat like this. Let us suppose if this is one, this is another. So the, each of these represent one, one chromosome. So this will form a bivalent or a tetrad. The last one is chiasmata. Chiasmata is when crossing over actually takes place. Let us suppose this is one, this is another. So if you look at this area, this is an X-shaped structure where the crossing over actually will take place. So X-shaped structure formed during crossing over. This X-shaped structure will have some features of the maternal chromosome and some feature of the paternal chromosome. So this chiasmata is formed during the diplotene stage of meiosis 1. So synapsis will happen first. After that, synapsis will happen during zygotene stage. Tetrad formation will happen in the pachytene stage and chiasmata formation will happen during the diplotene stage of meiosis 1. Question number 5. How does cytokinesis in plant cells differ from that in animal cells? This also I have explained you during the lesson. So when you talk about plant cells, they have an additional cell wall which is made up of cellulose and which is quite hard and tough and that is absent in animal cells. So that is why cytokinesis take place in different ways in animal and plant cells. When we talk about animal cells, it happens by the formation of a furrow. How is this furrow formed? This furrow is nothing but a ring made up of a protein called actin. So let us suppose if this is the animal cell, this is how a ring develops. This ring is made up of a protein. Now this ring contracts. As the ring contracts, a furrow develops here. The ring contracts. As the ring further contracts, it gets divided into two parts. So that is how it splits. So the furrow formation starts at the periphery and then move inwards. You can see it started from both the ends. Gradually the ends are brought near. So the ends will be brought further, more near. So it starts from end at periphery and move inwards. Whereas this is how it looks like. In case of plant cells, cell plate formation begins. It starts at the center and then move outward. So if you look at this cell, a cell plate will start forming from here and it will move outward something like this and then this cell plate will split it into two halves so that is how cytokinesis will take place in plant cells the next question find examples where four daughter cells from meiosis are equal in size and where they are found unequal in size so let us try to find out examples where four daughter cells are equal in size 
and some examples where they are not equal in size. So first let us talk about the scenario where the daughter cells are all equal in size. For example, the formation of sperms in human beings, which is also known as spermatogenesis. If you see all the sperms are equal in size. So we can say that this is an example where all the daughter cells are equal in size. Also formation of microspores in flowering plants. We talked about the process of sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So there we also have a male gamete and a female gamete. So male gametes are microspores because they are smaller in size. Female gametes are the megaspores. So the pro formation of male gametes in flowering plants, they are also, they are all equal in size. Unequal size daughter cells, if you talk about formation of ovum in human beings, for example, the female sperms, which uh, female uh, egg cells which are produced, not all of them are equal in size. Ovum is the one which is largest in size and that is why it is, the, it is considered as the egg. The remaining are there which form the secondary um, zygotes. You remember the fertilization in plants is often known as double fertilization because two fertilization takes place. So that is because of the unequal sized uh, female sex cells. Similarly, in case of uh, flowering plants, megaspores are not all equal in size. Let us look at the next question. Distinguish between anaphase of mitosis and anaphase 1 of meiosis. So let us look at it. In anaphase, the centromere splits in case of mitosis. But here the centromere doesn't split because in this case, the sister chromatids do not separate. It is the homologous chromosome which separates. I had explained this before also. But in this case, the sister chromatids separate. Therefore, the centromere splits. So this is how it looks like. So here if you see, it was earlier, it was just one chromosome and this was the centromere. So now it is one sister chromatid, another sister chromatid. But here in this case, it was something like this. So in this split, so you have two homologous chromosome. So the centromere is still intact. Let us look at the next question. Can there be mitosis without DNA replication in S phase? Absolutely not. This cannot happen because mitosis, what is the basic funda of mitosis? I have told this quite a number of times. It is the replication followed by splitting. So if you do not replicate the DNA, you just have one copy of DNA. So when you actually split to form two daughter cells, how will you divide that DNA into two daughter cells? So you need two copies of DNA to distribute it to both of them. So, you, so that if you have one cell, this cell will have some DNA. But when this cell will form two daughter cells, one and two, you need to give DNA to two, you need to give DNA to one. So you need two copies of DNA. So DNA replication is a must for mitosis to take place. Because if there is no DNA replication, then this DNA can either go to two or it can go to one. Right? Okay. Now let us look at the next question or the last question. Analyze the events during every stage of cell cycle and notice how the following two parameters change. Number of chromosomes per cell and amount of DNA content per cell. So when you talk about the number of chromosomes, we have seen that the number, when you talk about each and every stage of the cell cycle, so these are the different stages. G1 is the first gap phase where there is no change in the number of chromosomes, there is no change in the amount of DNA content. S phase is the synthesis phase where the DNA content is doubled. So DNA content becomes double. So if C is the DNA contained, it will become 2C because DNA replication take place in the synthesis phase. When you talk about G2, G2 is again a resting phase where there will be no change in the number of chromosomes or the amount of DNA. Then comes mitosis or there is a possibility that it can also undergo meiosis. Now if it is mitosis, again the number of chromosomes will remain the same. There will be no change. But if it is a meiosis, in that case, the number of chromosome will reduce to half. So basically, the DNA content will be changed during S phase. That is, the DNA content will get doubled. The number of chromosomes will remain 
n will remain unchanged that is number of chromosomes will remain unchanged if it is a mitosis but if it is a meiosis in case of meiosis the number of chromosome will reduce to half so number of chromosome will be half Right. So these are the stages. Now, if you talk about a specific stage in meiosis, so exact half happens in anaphase one. Anaphase one is the stage where the chromosome number is actually reduced to half. So these are the stages where uh, the number of chromosomes or the amount of DNA content changes. Otherwise, everywhere else they remain the same. They do not undergo any change. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope this lesson on cell division would have helped you. Now, please make a note of this that uh, this topic is extremely important to understand many other concepts because you would have seen that even in our earlier chapters while we were talking about uh, the different life processes, I would have told you, I would have mentioned about cell division quite a number of times but could not discuss that in detail because this, this had so much of detail. So I had to take it up as a separate lesson and I hope this helped you. If not, please go through the slides over and again, let get, but get your concepts clarified. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.